Hello and welcome to another Purveyor of Light, Lightroom Quick Tip. Uh, today we're going to have a real interesting one. Uh, it may run a little bit on the long side today, so be forewarned because it's not an easy process. But it was asked if we could turn around and create a preset for Lightroom based on another photographer's style. And so that we could simulate that style with our photos you know, using presets. And I thought this would be a great idea uh, because a lot of us have photographers that we admire. Uh, we like their, they have a certain style with their photos. You, do, you could just look at their photo and go, that's uh, that's X, Y, and Z's photo out. No doubt about it because you could recognize the style. And so wouldn't it be great if we made a, a preset that did just that. So I'm going to use an example today. I'm going to, uh, come in and um, I'm going to select Vivian Meyer. Okay, she's a lot of you that may or may not know. Uh, Vivian Meyer was a photographer from the 1950s to roughly the 90s uh, before she passed away. Uh, she was a relatively unknown photographer, but she specialized in street photography. Uh, really the gritty side of living in big cities like uh, Chicago, New York, and so forth. She captured them so naturally, so well. She had a style about doing that. And uh, I've always admired it. Uh, after I learned about her story, uh, you know, she had none of her photos developed. And she was a film photographer, obviously, back in no time. And so when she died, they auctioned off uh, these chests that were just filled with thousands of rolls of film. And they were undeveloped. And so when they auctioned off all her stuff, a gentleman in Chicago turned around and bought uh, in an estate sale. And um, he was curious and he started to have some of the roles developed. And he found out that, wow, these, these street photographies look pretty good. Uh, and so the story goes on. That's how she became discovered. Uh, after her death, uh, they developed all these photos, and now she has gallery showings and so forth and so on. Uh, became very, very well known throughout the industry. Uh, and if you look at her photos, they have a style about them. They have a look. And this is what you're looking at, and you're going, oh, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have a preset that, you know, gave us a look that captured like from Vivian Meyer days. Um, and that can be quite difficult. Okay. So it can be quite difficult reproducing the street photography, but let's go ahead and see if we can. All right. So my goal is to turn around and try to reproduce her look. And you can see they, they blend together. They're the same styles, the same look, uh, same treatment. All right. So I'm going to try to reproduce this effect. All right. So I've studied her work. And so now we're going to jump in to Lightroom and uh, see what we can do. All right. So I've selected a uh, photo from Vivian Meyer. And I'm going to I have a couple of street photography shots here from my collection. And we're going to try to make my photos look like Vivian Meyer's photos. And so be great if we can make a, a preset. So I'm going to select a photo here and I'm going to go into the develop module. And so I selected this photo and then I also have a photo from Vivian Meyer. Okay. So this is the one that is Vivian Meyer shot. Okay. Again, this is not my photo. This is hers from one of her collections. And so I'm going to have to see if I can uh, duplicate what's going on there. Now, if I can find out where am I other one is. Okay, so this is the one we're going to try to use as a base starting point. Make sure it's on reset so there's nothing addressed to it. And now I need to use Vivian Meyer's photo as a reference. Okay, so that as I make changes to this image, I could keep looking and referencing the, the Vivian Meyer. Down here in the bottom, okay, you have your R and A 
selection. I want you to hit the RNA and that opens up a reference panel. And now all I have to do is take the Vivian Meyer photograph and drag it into this reference. And so now when I'm working on this, this photo, I am referencing Vivian Meyer's photo. All right. So one of the great things about Lightroom, it does have this referencing ability. All right. So I'm going to edit and Again, I'm going to be looking at the reference the entire time compared to the changes that I'm making on the right side. All right. And I'm just going to work from the top of Lightroom panels and work all the way down. And I'm only going to touch the panels that I feel that are in need of adjustment compared to the reference. So first things first, well, we need to, we need to get this thing in black and white. So we're going to go to black and white. All right. And we get our typical flat, uninteresting black and white conversion from Lightroom. And uh, so now let's uh, let's start looking at things. All right. And temperature. I'm seeing that uh, Vivian's is much much warmer, much hotter photo. Uh, so I'm just going to increase the temperature. Okay. And again, I'm using my eye. Nothing else. There's, there's no formula. Okay. And I'm looking for the highlights and the skin tones and, and I'm comparing and that's how I'm making my adjustments. So I made it a little bit warmer. The tint, tint is a little bit off. So I don't know which way I'm going to make the tint here. And I think that's pretty good on the tint there. Exposure. I'm not going to change the exposure at all. Uh, but I do notice that uh, Vivian Myers has a very very defined contrast line so she's got much more contrast going than i do in my image so i'm going to bump up the contrast quite a bit okay you can see what that does is, is it puts in some shadows it blocks up some of the shadow lines and i'm gonna go there all right so i increase the shadow the contrast we're good now because i did that it blocked up some of the shadows and so i'm gonna open up the shadows a little bit uh you know not too much but i still want to have detail uh in the shadows okay so i'm going to say about right there and clarity okay we could uh, definitely add some clarity comparing that to, to uh vivian myers here and again i'm doing this by eye And I'm going to say that's that's pretty good on the clarity. Now, I apologize if, if YouTube's compression here doesn't uh, allow you to see the fine adjustments. But uh, I'll try to walk you through as I go through them. Okay, so that takes care of the basic panel. And I'm just like you said, I'm going to come down here. And I don't really see any tone curve adjustment needed. Uh, our tones are good. Uh, but we're definitely in a black and white area. Uh, we're going to need to change some of the black and white. Now, again, a reminder of the black and white is any color here, the red, orange, blue, 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 that's in the photo will be lighter or darker, depending on how we slide these. So that's all it is. It's controlling. If something is a red shirt, a red shirt or something, and we slide it to the right, it's going to dramatically increase it. If it's to the left, it's going to dramatically darken it. Okay. So it doesn't change the color. It just brightens and darkens each individual color that's in the photo. So again, there's not going to be much in the reds here. I'll do a little bit of adjustments in the reds. All right. Uh, the oranges, that's going to be in your flesh tones and your face and that. Uh, orange, you know, red, orange, it's going to be affecting skin tones. Uh, it's like if I take the orange here. Look what it does to the face if I swing it all the way over, right? Or all the way over the other way. So there's a lot of orange in the flesh tones. Um, so I'm just going to make adjustments there. And again, I'm using the reference photo for the flesh tones that are here. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the yellows. And again, flesh tones, that's where it's going to predominantly hit. Um, so carefully adjust. And again, if we don't get these exactly right, 
this first go around, it's okay. We can come back in and make adjustments and resave the, uh, the, the preset with the new settings. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's see greens. Uh, I'm not gonna, okay. Obviously the bush, but I don't have anything to reference in the, um, reference photo. So I am just going to use my eye to what I think appearance is, uh, Okay, because I don't have any greens to go by on this photo. So I'm just doing what looks good from this eye here. Uh, the aqua, I don't think there's much in the aqua here. I'll slide it over. There really is not. I will take my best guess. Look at the photo here to see how that adjusts. Uh, blues just as well. There's not many blues. I'm doing subtle little changes that will not really have a dramatic effect on the other photos. Uh, Purples and lastly magenta and again there's really not much in this particular photo of magenta so I'm just going to more or less just keep it at minimum changes and so there's my black and white panel okay and I'm happy with the changes there and my detail uh, we'll do the standard uh, 25 sharpening radius of one detail of 25 and we're going to come down no lens correction no transformation and we are going to do post vignetting because we do have some light fall off in the corners here of the reference photo so i'm going to reproduce the light fall off and it's not much but i am going to turn around and do it see if i that'll do a heavy vignette but i'm going to just duplicate what her lens was doing with her camera. And I think that right there uh, simulates the light fall off of her lens for this one. Okay. And I think we're there. All right. I think we are there. And so I am now going to save the preset. Okay, and I'm just going to call it uh, test two. Okay, and uh, I'll put it in my fine art just now for now. And I will then treatment and profile. Uh, I just turn around and I just make sure to check all. That's just the safest way to do this one. Make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, of course, if you wanted to take the time, what you didn't do, you could uncheck the ones you didn't do. But for this one here, this will work for us. And, okay, so test two, and we save it. Okay, so now we've done good. We've got our first draft of our preset. So we got to test it out to see how it works. So I'm going to reset this photo, and I'm going to come in here, and we need to make sure that my preset is there right so i'm going to turn off the reference photo and yep there's my test test two and that looks pretty good pretty nice all right so let's do another one let's see how it's working because one thing about presets if you're going to do a preset that's going to be generic you got to make sure it works well with all kinds of photos okay it's very important all right so here's a kid another street photo and we're gonna go do our newly created one and look at that tell me that doesn't take you back to the 1950s uh street look the before and the after i think we got really close with reproducing the the vivian meyer look so let's let's try another one here chinese restaurant develop this thing and again doesn't look very interesting does it this is eh, it's humdrum but let's put our preset on it that we made and look at that takes you back in time doesn't it it it's so it's amazing on how much 
color and change and contrast and light fall off and things like that can transition a photo. Let's do one more. All right. So here's a cafe. Okay. Nice photo. But again, wouldn't it look better if it was taken in 1950? Look at that. And again, the before and the after. I think we did a really good job. I think this is a winning preset. So, hopefully, I didn't put you guys to sleep, but I thought it was a great question, okay, on how to use a reference photo from another photographer and to create your own uh, Lightroom preset. And now I have this preset made, I can use it for any photo I wish, and it's gonna make amazing results. And you can test it, all right? Just take your photo and come in, and you go, yeah, that's a nice photo. But now it's a more interesting photo, okay? It, it transitions time and space and elements. Um, and this is now your preset, okay? Because you created it from scratch, and you can use it on all your photos. And uh, I think you're going to be very pleased. So I highly recommend you get in, have some fun. Start learning to make your own presets, and I think you're going to find it a very rewarding experience. All right, guys. Till next week, you guys take care.